Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Borosil Renewables Limited Q4FY22 results conference call, hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kevin Kadakia from Access Capital Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Farzan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Kevin Karakia, part of research for capital goods and logistics sectors at Access Capital. Uh, on behalf of Access, I'm pleased to welcome you all for the Borussia Renewables Limited quarter and full year ended March 22 earnings conference call. We have with us the management team today from Borussia Renewables, which is represented by Mr. P.K. Kheruka, Executive Chairman, Mr. Ashok Jain, Whole Time Director, Mr. Sunil Rungta, CFO, and Mr. Swapnil Walun, Head of Marketing. Uh, we will begin with the opening remarks from Mr. Kheruka, followed by a Q&A session. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, <clears throat> and welcome to the Borussia Renewables FI22 Investor Call. It is a pleasure to be interacting with you once again. The board of the company approved the company's financial results for fourth quarter uh, for the year finance uh, 22 and uh, for the whole year 22 as well on the 5th of May. Our results and an updated presentation have been sent to the stock exchanges and have also been uploaded on the company's website. During the year gone by, the company recorded net sales of 644.2 crore rupees, an increase of 28% over financial year 21. Sales volumes on a quantitative basis grew by 11% over the year. Net sales were also boosted by higher average ex factory prices of tempered solar glass during the year. Average prices during the year were about uh, 133 rupees per millimeter per square meter as compared to rupees 119 per millimeter per square meter in financial year 21, an increase of 12%. Export sales during financial year 22, including to customers in SCZ, were Indian rupees 171 crores, comprising 27% of the turnover, an increase of 55% over financial year 21, while direct exports were 127 crores, up from 67 crore rupees in financial year 21. During the last quarter of financial year 22, the company recorded net sales of 179.1 crores. From a quantitative standpoint, sales volume were 2% higher than for the same quarter in the last year. However, owing to a lower average factory selling price by about 14%, the sales value was lower by 8%. For the year gone by, in addition to the inflation in prices of natural gas, soda ash, packing materials and other commodities, seen more so in the second half, logistic costs have also escalated disproportionately. However, higher annual average realizations for the year have covered these cost increases. EBITDA during financial year ended 21-22, including a subsidy of Rupees 9.7 crores from the government of Gujarat was rupees 265 crores, corresponding to an EBITDA margin of 41.1%, as compared to an EBITDA margin of 40.4% for the year ended March 2021. During quarter 4 FY22, EBITDA margin was 34.9%, as most part of cost increases took place in the last three, four months of the financial year, whereas the selling prices prevailing during this period were at the previous low levels. Consequently, the cost increases are not commensurately covered in the selling prices. <clears throat> Higher EBITDA led to an increase in the profit after tax, and the company has recorded a profit after tax of 165.9 crores, which is an increase of 85% over financial year 21. Profit after tax during quarter four financial year 22 
was rupees 46.4 crores. This is a decline of 31% as compared to quarter 4 financial which was an exceptionally high base quarter driven by the then prevailing high prices of solar glass. The profit after tax as a percentage of sales during the last quarter for the financial year 21-22 was a healthy 25.9%. The demand for solar glass remains high in both the domestic and export markets. The current geopolitical climate has also heightened the need for power security by enhancing solar capabilities available from domestic production. The country has seen solar installations rise to over 12.4 gigawatts in the financial year 22, which is almost 80% higher than the previous year. This is expected to rise exponentially in the coming years, led by the policy and fiscal measures undertaken by the government in the recent past. There has been a significant import of modules in the last quarter of the financial year 21-22 by developers and, and others to avoid payment of basic customs duty which came into effect from 1st April 2022. While this may to an extent impact demand for components during the current quarter, we see no signs of this nature. During financial year 22, the average gross pull of glass from our furnaces was 443 tons per day on a capacity of 450 tons per day. We have been producing at capacity and selling out the entire production. As many are aware, the company has undertaken a brownfield expansion project, SG3, to enhance the, capa to enhance the capacity by another 550 tons per day, bringing the total production from this location up to 1,000 tons per day during the second half of this year. Global supply chain bottlenecks are likely to delay the commissioning by two or three months. This will significantly enhance the capacity and capability of the company to meet the growing demand for current products as well as the larger sizes glass which are becoming more popular. As some of you are aware, the company entered into an agreement to acquire a 100% stake in the Interfloat Group, the largest solar glass manufacturer in Europe. Interfloat Group has a production capacity of 300 metric tons per day in solar photovoltaic, solar thermal, and greenhouse glasses. It has manufactured solar glass since 2010 and enjoys deep-rooted relationships in the European glass trade for over four decades. The acquisition was made for a consideration of euros 52.5 million, which is tantamount to about 425 crore Indian rupees. There is an additional consideration payable based on performance over 2024, 2025, and 2026 by sharing the EBIT, but not exceeding 50% of each respective year. During the calendar year 2021, the Interflow Group posted a revenue of 60 million euros, which works out to about 525 crore rupees. The acquisition will accelerate investments in new products and technology development in Interflow that will benefit customers. Boros's expertise in achieving high efficiency in the manufacturing process to enhance throughput and lower costs will bring economies of scale to Interfloat's expansion and manufacturing plans. We expect a significant jump in the demand for solar glass in Europe in view of the enhanced focus by the governments to reduce dependence on Russian gas and Chinese, Chinese solar components. Many new module manufacturing plants are expected to be commissioned besides capacity expansions by the existing manufacturers. Customers of solar glass in Europe are looking for availability of higher volumes from a diversified and reliable supply chain with domestic routes. There is a plan to increase the capacity at the Interfloat plant from 300 to 500 tons per day in the next 18 months. The current SG3 expansion in India 
will take borosil renewables domestic capacity to 1000 metric tons per day by september 2022 together with the 500 tons per day enhanced capacity from its european operations and proposed sg4 the company expects to have a total capacity of 2050 tons by the end of the year 2223 while de-risking production from a single location the company also plans to further increase its capacity to 2600 tons per day in uh, calendar year 2025 by way of sg5 we are pleased with the performance in financial year ended march 2022 we saw increased sales service at virtually 100% capacity production from the factory the implementation of the third furnace has progressed well but for small unforeseen delays owing to global supply chain issues which are outside our sphere of control we have completed the acquisition of interfloat to establish an on ground presence in an important market for borosil renewables i'm proud of our team's achievements and look forward with confidence to continue doing their best in the future with a larger team that now includes our colleagues in europe with that i would now like to open the floor to questions if you have thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Avnish Khara from VT Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Avnish Kara, your line is in talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Mr. Kara, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. The current participant has left the question queue. We'll move on to the next question from the line of Mohit Kumar from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir, and congratulations on a very good quarter, especially the entire fiscal year. Uh, sir, uh, the first question is on the GMB plus interfloat which you are acquiring. So, what was the margins in FY20, FY22 for the entity, and how do you plan to improve it? And is there any plan to increase the capacity uh, for interfloat and GMB over medium term? Uh, so. Uh we have not shared the margin with anybody yet so far i can just say it was very good uh once we take a call to share this information you certainly share it um the issue with interfloat is that during the current year the prices of inputs like natural gas electricity and soda ash which has been available to everybody have gone up there as well and uh, therefore that has brought margins under some pressure it is still profitable but uh, the the margins have reduced somewhat uh, we are renegotiating prices with our customers and after some time once the uh, once the, the the horizon becomes clear we would be very happy to share the outlook with you but we must remember that the agreement was signed as recently as the 25th of april which has really given us about 10 days between then and now to have uh, been able to understand uh, the the workings of the company in detail and now asking mr ashok jain to add uh, his, his observations here yeah moreover the closing of the transaction is yet to take place which will be two months plus down the line and once we have control on, of the company then we will start sharing all the information including consultation and all so let's wait for some more time before we before you have all the numbers with you and uh, we will have complete transparency in terms of information sharing as per the listing requirement understood sir so given the fact that we are a 
see is uh, we'll get commission in this fiscal year, right? Uh, so uh, this, uh, I think, in the quarter three, CY22. Uh, so yeah, how do you see the demand panning out? Are we uh, in talks for further some kind of quantity tie-ups given this large capacity is coming up? Yeah, so demand in India is quite good, actually. Last year, uh, the country has added more than 12 gigawatts and uh, only less than half of it was manufactured in India. With BCD and PLI scheme having come into play, the domestic manufacturing of modules is likely to run up quite significantly. The imports are going to drop. That would mean that the demand for glass is going to be substantially higher than before. So we are well in, well in time to commission our SG3 project by September. And uh, our customers are, of course, in touch with us for long-term tie-ups as well. Uh, we we believe that we will be able to conclude some of these contracts within this quarter. Uh, as of now, nothing has been done in the sense concluded, but uh, discussions are in progress with uh, at least three, four large buyers. So we will have long-term tie-up with them. And uh, also, we are quite sure of the uh, like the demand and sale of the extra production will not be a challenge. So how about the capacity utilization in Q1 F, uh, Q4 FI22, and uh, how is it currently? Q1 FI22 was fairly flat out at, uh, as was mentioned, 443 tons per day or so. So that is against the capacity of 450 tons per day, so it was 100%. And in current quarter also, besides uh, certain uh, uh, downtime in the machines in April, uh, we are running at almost full capacity. So last question, my sir, how are you managing our gas requirements? Is, is it completely spot in, if, uh, or is it uh, some mix of, you know, uh, APM or something? Yeah, so we have a couple of uh, different type of arrangements. Uh, we hardly buy anything under sport and uh, uh, we, are, we are fairly uh, comfortable in terms of the costing because we are not buying under sport. So, uh, of course, some quantity is coming under APM as well, as has been the case. About uh, one third of the requirement is under uh, APM. Understood, sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Keval Lashir from DSP Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Hello. Um, thanks for the opportunity, sir. I have uh, two questions. So first is re related to your German acquisition. Uh, so what is the annual solar PV addition in the European market that we expect? And second is what percentage of total solar glass requirement in Europe is currently imported? So annual addition in Europe are almost close to 20 gigawatts uh, in that sense, uh, in the entire Europe put together. But the manufacturing, local manufacturing is quite limited as of now. Uh, it is less than 3 gigawatt. Uh, similarly, uh, like Indian program of Atmanirbhar Bharat, they are also uh, having solar accelerator program where local module manufacturing and local solar cell manufacturing is being promoted. We believe that the local manufacturing of solar modules uh, will go up to 8 to 10 gigawatts in next 2-3 years time. And uh, this will propel the demand for solar glass into Europe, which is one of the reasons why we have taken this step of getting into this acquisition and, uh, and, and, and also looking at expanding it immediately. Got it, sir. And uh, second is, in India, as you see, many module manufacturers, many module manufacturers are aggressively expanding the capacity uh, post the BCD. And also by CY25, you will be able to cater to 15 gigawatts of solar modules in India. So what is the possibility of us signing annual contracts with all these large module manufacturers? So I just mentioned that we are in discussion with the, uh, many, many large uh, module manufacturers. Uh, the, okay. The agreements have not been concluded, concluded as yet, but uh, they are in the advanced stage of finalization. And uh, they are also eager, the customers are also eager to have long-term supply arrangement in order to ensure the supply chain. And we are also keenly interested to have those uh, contracts so that our capacities are fairly stable and we have benefits of larger production runs with higher efficiencies. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of
Anuj Upadhyay from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So you mentioned about the average expected price of tempered solar glass for the entire year <coughs> as uh, one one thirty three. Uh, could you just quantify it for the quarter and uh, for the corresponding quarter of uh, previous year as well? So we already mentioned that the qu the quarter four FY twenty two realization has been lower by fourteen percent. of the previous year corresponding quarter and uh, in terms of the number for this quarter it was about the average of the average of the full year only it was closer to that number only uh, 133 and out 1 rupee here and there 134 actually 134 okay but this is slightly lesser than what uh, we saw during the q3 q3 saw uh, the number raising slightly above 140 and factoring the thing that the input cost has already gone up any reason sir why the realization was uh, down by uh, say 3 or 4% uh, on a q and q basis where yeah, the input cost has age, been much better higher sorry yeah. as we have been explaining in all our conference call or investor calls the prices are largely or largely depending on the landed cost of imports as the landed cost of imports have moved southwards or northwards our prices have been adjusted accordingly in the in the quarter to quarter basis so this is why you see that there has been a decline in the last quarter but as we speak the prices have again started to go up from the level prevailing in the last quarter completed quarter prices are actually up by about 14 15% already uh, in in the current uh, period so these are fluctuations which we have to live with in terms of the international supply chain india still depends on uh, imported glass to the extent of more than 65% so this is quite sizable amount to to ignore and the prices are accordingly uh, getting moved because of the imported prices okay sir and uh, next on the acquisition of interflow sir you mentioned that europe is also following in the, <clears throat> the similar pattern which is been seen in india where the domestic manufacturing is given more importance could you also uh, highlight or mention about what kind of uh, <clears throat> import restrictions or the duty they are imposing on the Chinese solar glass manufactured over there. So Europe has anti-dumping duty against China uh, of the order of 55 to 60 percent, uh, depending on the source. Uh, against other countries, they do not have uh, any anti-dumping duty. So India is uh, a preferred source of import in Europe because of China plus one strategy, and uh, we find a better uh, better pricing also in terms of our uh, realization because uh, the. local prices are fairly uh, fairly high in terms of the prices over there so uh, we, we are we are very keen to expand our uh, our our products in or our uh, supply to european markets okay sir and could you mention about the uh, <clears throat> proportion of export in the overall sales and uh, post this acquisition what kind of change we are expect, expecting in import export uh, going ahead sir in broad sense the domestic and export sales say over next 2 to 3 years on the line so our direct exports are about 20% of our production and uh, which we believe we will continue to have uh, on a longer term basis and uh, uh, scj exports are close to about 7% so that's uh, within india but it's a, it's an export from that perspective so we believe that these percentage will continue in the after the expansion tools Sir, no, sir. That's it from my end. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Monica Gandhi from Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Sachi, please go. I am our colleague uh, Sachin from Birla Mutual Fund only. Please go ahead. Yeah. so i just want to ask uh, the question uh, see last quarter margin got impacted because of uh, uh, you know increase in the uh, input cost mainly the fuel cost soda ash and gas prices so uh, considering the fact that uh, the borosil renewable is uh, you know only manufacturing in india so na is not the price able to pass it on to uh, end user yeah so uh, this this question is to be answered in the same way like the import prices are the governing factors for uh, what would be the prices which we can get from our customers in india all 
all said and done, we try to pass on the cost increases, but again, we are restricted by the landed cost because the customers have choice to import. And also, we have to assume that there is a certain time lag between the cost increases and the time to adjust any selling prices because we have to convince the customers to to, to absorb certain portion of the cost increases. So we are in continuous dialogue with our customers to, to do so. And as I said, the prices from China or Malaysia have already started to go up. Uh, so the, there has been uh, rise in the prices in the recent, the current quarter. So we'll see an impact uh, over a period of time, over a period of quarters, that uh, these costs are to a great extent passed on. Okay, how frequently you ne negotiate or renegotiate the contract with your with your customers? Our supplies are normally on month-to-month -month basis, so every month there is a there is a price negotiation and uh, quantity uh, confirmation from the customers. Sometimes it is done on quarterly basis also. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it from our side. Yeah, these cost increases are applicable to all the solar glass manufacturers around the world. So we uh, we are not the only ones to get affected because of the cost increases. So everybody is looking at their own balance sheet and P&L and trying to uh, readjust the prices to the reality. And uh, uh, this, of course, has some time time lag. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pradyumna Chaudhary from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to understand, like, you've explained the rationale why uh, we have gone ahead and purchased into float group. But from the uh, seller's perspective, I just wanted to understand their rationale, especially considering uh, that even the valuation uh, seems to be uh, on a reasonable side, I would say. So sellers uh, uh, are actually not a glass manufacturer uh, background, and uh, they they are basically financial investors. Uh, uh, just to just to assume that uh, uh, they are not an actual glass manufacturer. So actually, they were looking at uh, uh, the capex plan which was uh, in front of them, and they also uh, looked at the Boros, what Borussia Renewables has been doing in the same space, and they were quite. Uh, quite comfortable in talking to us on the particular transaction and uh, they also saw that uh, we have been uh, uh, we have been doing quite well in terms of our production our profitability and they cross checked our background and everything and they finally uh, and the transition got finally negotiated and concluded in terms of their uh, uh, their uh, uh, thought process they would have also thought that uh, by joining hands with us uh, uh, as a major uh, partner, we will be able to uh, smoothen out the CapEx uh, uh, program as well as run the operations uh, more uh, in more for a long-term basis because uh, we are a glass manufacturers of uh, more than six decades standing. So they saw a good uh, good partnership in us. Finally, they uh, initially they had agreed for 85% stake sale, but finally they agreed for 100%. But at the same time, they visited our plant and they were comfortable with our uh, our, our project, our uh, operations, and our profitability and every other aspects of business. And also saw that the Indian market is also very uh, very fast growing in this space. So they they went ahead with a swipe of certain portion of the uh, acquisition cost, so that they are also equally interested in that sense through holding company like Renewables. <laughs> And also through that, they are remaining interested in the uh, European operations as a, as a subsidiary. So the transition got uh, concluded at very comfortable uh, level, and uh, uh, this uh, 30 million cash payment and 22.5 million uh, share swap is something uh, which is uh, comfortable from our side as well in terms of uh, obligation uh, and uh, ability to do the transaction. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. That's all from it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deeril from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, how are we look to fund the expansion that we are planning for Europe as well as for our SG4 and SG5? 
So for the European expansion, uh, we are still calculating the capex requirement. The the existing team has worked out some numbers which we are evaluating. Also, we are looking at the project uh, design itself, and there could be certain changes there. But uh, in terms of the financing of the overall project cost, there we will be taking certain amount of loan in the target company, and also there is some government subsidy from the state government over there, which will be utilized for the project, and some amount of uh, funds will be provided from internal accruals of the company, which uh, uh, which have been accumulated in the company and uh, more or less they have been utilized to some extent for the project already. So this will be a financing pattern for the European op operations capex. In India, uh, for SG4, we have still not uh, uh, formed up our financing plan, but uh, it will surely be a mix of uh, debt and equity and internal accruals. So maybe in uh, next uh, next couple of quarters, we will be coming back to you with that information after approval from the board of directors. Okay. And sir, is the cost of operation uh, in Europe is same as, as we operate in India? Or is it higher? So in terms of the inputs cost, uh, basically the soda ash and other commodities are internationally priced, but uh, currently the gas price is uh, out of wake for, from, uh, from the perspective of uh, European operations because of the real Russia-Ukraine crisis. And in terms of the uh, manpower cost, it is uh, higher in Europe. But at the same time, the local production is very valuable over there for the domestic buyers. And correspondingly, they are able to recover higher selling price from the customers. So on a net basis, if you see, though the costs are higher, the prices are also higher. And there is a decent amount of EBITDA in the company, which, uh, uh, which is quite uh, comfortable from the European operations point of view. And so what is the market share of Interfloat in European region? It's close to two-thirds as of now, and uh, uh, one-third is being made by imports from uh, India, Malaysia, Vietnam, and other places. Okay, and so lastly, in this 13-14 percent rise that we are seeing currently, so is it fully covering the uh, cost inflation which, which is there? No, not fully. Okay, so you feel that you know margin pressure would continue even in Q1? I wouldn't comment on that because the prices keep changing every 10 days. So and prices could change rapidly also. So I would not put a number to it as of now. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, Abhay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kashyap Zaveri from MK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions from my side. One, uh, you know, this uh, total 1,000 TPD capacity would be Sorry equivalent to, you, to what? Uh, the audio yeah. is not clear from your line. Please check. Is this better? Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so this 1000 TPD capacity would be equivalent to uh, how many, uh, you know, megawatts uh, if we were to convert uh, that? It will be close to 6 uh, to 6.25 gigawatts. 6 gigawatt plus. 6 gigawatt plus. Yes. And uh, so the second question is on this, uh, you know, again, interflow. In the last question, you mentioned that it's about uh, the market share of interflow is about two third. Uh, if I got the numbers correctly, you said total, uh, you know, the size of uh, European market is about 20 gigawatts, of which domestic production is about 3 gigawatts. And of that 3 gigawatt, interfloat is about two-thirds. Yeah, so local manufacturing uh, is about 2.5 to 3 gigawatt, and whatever the interfloat production is taking place, uh, the entire production is getting sold in Europe. And uh, okay. that would be equal to about 65, 66% of the demand. Sure. And uh, I, you know, I can see about 300 crores of, uh, you know, uh, CWIP already there on the book as of March 22. Uh, the, uh, this additional 550 TPD, which we are putting up, what would be the cost per TPD uh, that we are incurring? So the last approved price for the project is 650 crores, uh, which has been approved by the board. So from the angle of 550 ton, it would be like in that ratio, 650 crore of 550 okay. ton per day. Okay. And last question from my side, in this, uh, you know, 450 TPD, uh, you know, I, I understand about 
you know, two two and a half years ago when uh, you know head met uh, Mr. Shivar Kheruka, there was uh, you know some talks about reducing the uh, thickness of the glass and consequent uh, improvement in the uh, overall freight cost and uh, you know its impact on the margin. So in this uh, you know 450 TPD today. Uh, what's the breakup of uh, you know if if you look at the thickness uh, you know what would be the breakup? We have been successful. Hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, ladies and gentlemen. The line for the management has got disconnected. Request you all to please stay online while we reconnect them. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. The line for the management is reconnected. Thank you, and over to you, sir. So, uh, the question was about thinner glass. I'm very happy yeah. to say, as much as 27.3 percent of the total production of the company is now being sold in thicknesses which are less than 3.2. So, uh, it mm -hmm. is taking its time in uh, getting accepted, but it is getting accepted. And we are drawing uh, more. Uh, uh, it, these sales are more remunerative for us. Uh, so when you say less than three point two, this will be largely two mm. Sorry, you know uh, this includes two mm, two point five, and two point eight mm. All three thicknesses. Okay. And the difference uh, in the uh, the freight cost as a percentage of uh, the selling price would be what number between the two? So freight freight difference is not significant. Actually, the prices are uh, in lower thicknesses are remunerative, more uh, higher than the proportionate uh, reduction in the in the thickness. So, like mm -hmm. say one square meter of 3.2 may be selling at say 500 rupees, uh, and 2.1 may be selling at 4.1. So it is not disproportion. It is not proportionately down in that sense. So you get a higher mm -hmm. average per per square meter per millimeter of glass when you sell a lower thickness glass, and these glasses okay. are becoming popular because of the bifacial modules coming into play, uh, very big mm -hmm. way in uh, China and uh, other parts of the world, including now in India. So this mm -hmm. demand would uh, rise significantly in the years to come, uh, which will be good for the company because the company is equipped to make two millimeter glass and uh, supply it to the customers here. We are already exporting two millimeter glass. Okay. And last question from my side. In your, uh, you know, the total uh, order book as of today, or let's say total sales also today, uh, how much would be PSU? I'm sorry, I couldn't. How much would be what? PSUs. PSUs. Ah, PSUs. So PSUs are very limited uh, because, uh, uh, like say, BHL is yet to re they have just resumed their production earlier. They were running mm -hmm. at about 200 megawatts, but uh, they had stopped production in between. So they are the largest customer in PSU, but uh, otherwise there are no not many PSUs. Rajasthan Electronic and Central Electronics are also, to some extent, the buyers. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. That's it from my side, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshay Kothari from Envision Capital Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so I, I wanted to understand regarding this uh, interfloat acquisition. Like in India, the pricing power we have is uh, based on the landed cost of imports. So in Europe, uh, what, how is the pricing power? Like uh, you did mention that uh, uh, their local manufacturing is favored by the local population. So can you throw some light on that? In Europe, uh, the domesticity uh, of the source of supply is very important. And so, uh, therefore, in the case of many uh, consumers who are large volume consumers, uh, they, they do not really uh, factor, they, they, they do not compare the prices with imported prices. Uh, 
uh, which is done mainly by the smaller producers. And so, uh, yeah, the, the system of pricing, system of buying there is a little bit different. Yeah, so particularly in uh, Germany and other parts, the, uh, there are annual contracts uh, done by the, by the Interflow group with the customers because the customers are uh, wanting a dependable supply source and also a consistent volume coming to their factories because solar glass after all is about 11-12% of the cost of module and uh, they would like a dependable source which, uh, which is available in the form of interflow there. So the pricing is not exactly in, in tune with the imported landed cost but uh, it is on certain uh, decent uh, uh, margin basis on which uh, interflow has been able to sell their volumes to the customers and customers are willing to pay that uh, slightly extra price for this kind of uh, assurance, assured supply chain. Okay, good. And uh, could you uh, just give a sense of uh, cost of uh, generation of power uh, from solar energy vis-a-vis -vis, uh, any other source of energy in Europe? Uh, like what is the differential uh, going on uh, right now? Solar energy is much cheaper than any other source of energy. Okay. Uh, we could not give you more detail than that okay. uh, because we are, we are not that familiar with that market yet. Okay. okay. And by far the cheapest source of supply. Were there any other buyers for Interfloat? No, it was a bilateral transaction. Uh, we had a discussion with them and then we both got interested in the transaction. So there was no process being run. So it was a bilateral deal. Okay. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Levin Shah from ValueCast Investment Advisors. Please stay on the line. Upon Javit. The current participant has placed the call on hold. We will move on to the next question from the line of Nikhil Chaudhary from Chris Portfolio. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm audible. Yes, please. Hello. Yeah, yeah you're audible. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So most of the questions have been answered. I just wanted to understand the normalized margins, like considering the interfood maybe some supply challenges and that is why the margins may be depressed. But if you could shift some margin color, whether it is higher than Borosil or similar to Borosil, the normalized margins. And second question was on the gas supplies front. Like, are you seeing normalization of gas supplies or uh, do we see the challenges? To it has been a lot. Uh, Mr. Chaudhary, sorry to interrupt you. The audio is breaking from your line now. Please check. Hello, is it better? Yes, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, so I just wanted to understand. I'll repeat my question. Uh, wanted to probably get some color on the normalized EBITDA margins of Interfloat, if you could share. Like, is it better than Borusil or similar to Borusil? I can understand the current challenges that, that are depressing the margins. You could probably share some color on that. And second thing, sir, uh, we made an acquisition at the time when the gas supplies are really challenging for uh, uh, the glass manufacturers in Europe. So is it getting better or do we see some challenges going forward? Because uh, suppose if they don't normalize and the capacity remains unutilized, uh, so probably even if you have paid some reasonable price, it doesn't probably make sense for us to pay even 400 crores then. Just wanted some color on that. So the supplies are not, uh, the, the production is not unutilized. All the glass being made there is being sold. Uh, there, there is no shortage of demand for the glass. Uh, so that, that is, to answer your last question first, uh, giving you any sense of the normalized margin is premature at this time because we really need to be in control of the company before we can share this information. Regarding your question, which was uh, regarding the prices of gas in Europe, the answer is that uh, the government is very uh, acutely seized of this problem. They recognize that the price of gas is very high and something has to be done to protect the industries uh, which, which are dependent upon uh, the supply of gas and which are, uh, of, uh, of, uh, which are of national uh, strategic priority. They have mentioned Interfloat by name. Uh, in, uh, amongst the list of companies which are going to qualify for uh, some support from the government. However, the exact nature and extent of support has not yet been discussed. What is in the air is that uh, at least uh, one proposal which we have heard is that any price above a certain ceiling which is fixed by the government 
is going to be borne by the government. So the user of the gas will know that this is the ceiling at which I will get my gas and no higher than that. So if that happens, then that brings a lot of comfort to a lot of men. Understood. So this was very clear. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, and wish you all the best. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Levin Shah from ValueQuest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. My question was on the exports market. So what we uh, read and understand is that uh, uh, post this uh, imposition of duties uh, in US. Uh, specifically on the uh, Chinese and other South Asian uh, countries, the import of panels as well as glass. There has been a, a very good demand that we have seen from the uh, US market for the local players. But when we look at our uh, revenue, our exports uh, are like 20% of sales and that is also predominantly to Europe uh, is what I understand. So is there a mismatch in terms of our uh, growth from US versus uh, domestic sale and model players? Uh, the kind of growth that they are seeing in US? So in, in US actually there is no uh, bar on import as of now uh, because the program which they were to announce or they had announced rather in order to uh, promote the local manufacturing of modules and incentive program that has not been finally approved by the Senate yet. So they, they do not have any support system to local for local manufacturing of module as of now. So there is some disconnect in the thought process I think. And uh, to the extent that uh, the, import, the modules are getting imported, the local manufacturing is very limited in USA as of now. To our understanding, it is about 2 to 3 gigawatts only, whereas they install more than 20 gigawatts annually. So it is similar situation like Europe. But they are moving slowly on the, on the part of uh, promoting the local manufacturing, which is why the demand in, U in USA is less. Moreover, a lot, lot of US companies have Chinese in Chinese stake or Chinese interest in terms of the purchase department or like that. And they have preference to Chinese companies or Malaysian companies for that, from, for that region. Because when we discuss with the, our customers or prospective buyers in USA, a lot of time we experience that this kind of phenomena is there. So we are of course trying to increase our export to US, but we have a limited volume as of now to offer and it is rather easier and at a better price in Europe compared to USA. So we are, we are aware that Europe, USA also is going to be a big market for us, but as of now that does not seem to be so. Okay, but uh, the same, uh, the similar kind of demand trend both cell and module guys are seeing, even we are witnessing that. Obviously we will not be able to supply immediately because of the capacity uh, limitation that we have. Yeah. And for the module industry, it is quite good because uh, because of the China plus one strategy, the lot of lot of requirement of USA is now being made by countries like India, where lot of export orders are getting diverted. So from module perspective, it is working out uh, faster for Indian exporters, but for glass, it is yet to become like that. Right, sir. But ultimately, the module manufacturers in the domestic market will also procure grass uh, domestically, right, to supply to the U.S. Yeah, so, so then, domestic uh, glass demand is quite high and it, it is going to be even higher for this region what you mentioned regarding export to U.S. and all. So that hmm. goes without saying and we see that the domestic glass demand will be close to double in next two years time. So local manufacturing is going up, the import of module is going down in India which itself will uh, increase the demand for glass substantially besides the export in the in the installation. Okay, okay. Sir, and my last question is on this. Uh, so the duty protection that we have from Chinese imports and I understand that that is going to expire uh, somewhere in July of this year. So now uh, what is the uh, requirement for it to be reinstated and has there been talk uh, that you have had with the government, government agencies on this regard? Yeah, so there is a certain process under which uh, we have to go through. So we have, we had filed our application for sunset review and after public hearing and all the government uh, has been analyzing the data or the information. Now they have, uh, they are in the process of further processing it for issuing of a disclosure uh, document and then finally issuing the uh, uh, the, the final findings which would include 
continuation of duty or or uh, reduction or increase in duty so as we speak the disclosure has just been issued yesterday and uh, we uh, we believe that uh, uh, this is going into right direction as of now but we have to wait for final final findings from the government after hearing the views from different parties all the stakeholders right sir and uh, what is the uh, just a basic question but what is the duties uh, that we are protected with i mean the quantum of duties uh, currently it is 12 to 15% largely against uh, import from china and against uh, malaysia it is 9.71% so these are the duty structures understood uh, thank you sir thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of samir gandhi from green energy sustainables llc please go ahead yeah good afternoon am i audible yes please yeah thanks for giving me an opportunity uh, sir i am director of my uh, module uh, this manufacturer association of maharashtra also for the solar uh, i have few questions sir first thing is after bcd is imposed 40% even dcr panels which do not have any import contents they have also gone up so whether boro still has any opportunity to get a better price realization uh, in a way whether this 40% bcd is positive for us or negative for us it is definitely positive for the nation as such because this means that uh, it will become prohibitive for anyone to import uh, modules going forward as such the demand for modules produced in india is going to expand exponentially so in that sense it is good for the solar industry uh, solar manufacturing industry as such however there is uh, the, the the 40% duty on modules does not have any anything to do with the import of glass glass can continue to be imported by anybody from anywhere subject to payment of uh, whatever is the applicable duty if there is any uh, so if uh, there is no applicable duty then glass can be imported without payment of duty so to the extent of the company the advantage is that there are more customers now in india who are going to be making modules and hence we have an opportunity of selling to customers who are going to make modules in india in the past when modules were being imported into india the company had no opportunity to sell any glass to such manufacturers okay because my question is like that even uh, dcr modules whether they do not have any import contents of sale they have also taken this advantage and increased the price so uh, my question was accordingly that sir my second question is you have said that currently you have facing some bottlenecks for the expansion so what kind of bottlenecks are these and uh, even after this are you sure that you will able to go for 1000 mt by september 2022 and my other question in this the are we getting any pli advantages the people who use our glass in manufacture of modules in india will definitely get advantage of pli because the higher the domestic content which they are using in the manufacture of the modules the higher pli they will get so definitely the people who are going to make modules using domestic glass will uh, will will be earning more money than people who are importing glass with regard to the question of our projects uh, we we uh, are not sure which bottleneck so we actually mentioned about the covid and other situations which which the pro, which delayed the project by couple of months because it was applicable not only in india but in countries where the equipment were being being made for supply to our plant so these there have been certain delays in those uh, supplies uh, which is now almost uh, sorted out and our project instead of july will get commissioned in september so there has been 2 3 months delay only which is uh, understandable from our perspective from, from looking at the circumstances and uh, yeah there is no change in our uh, in our plans to uh, do another 1000 tons after the commissioning of sg3 there is no change at all okay sir so my next question is sir uh, right now we are facing power cuts and the tremendous increase in the gas price so how do it affect uh, borosil first thing second thing our production is at one site only so uh, are you going for any multi locations to dealing from the single site uh, risk 
at this moment so far as multi location is concerned we took a slightly bigger step and we shifted our location to germany but as far as india is concerned for the time being we are still looking at manufacturing in the same location but there are in many many advantages which we have in continuing in this location because of the availability of so many services which are essential for the production of solar glass sir uh, whether domestic production is sufficient in india for uh, taking into account all manufacturing capacity of the modules you see that's a difficult question to answer we know that at least one company adani uh, is well on its way to setting up production facilities and they have said that they expect to come into production by the end of this year or maybe at the very latest in the early part of the next year so this is what the market news is and that would be about 600 tons per day so that's not a small capacity in addition to that there are other companies like triveni and uh, gopal glass uh, who have announced that they will be setting up solar glass production i don't know what tonnage is and when it is going to come up but they have announced and we believe that they will come up so we don't have much doubt about that uh there are also other companies like gold plus who have announced and uh, another saint gobain seems to have announced something as well but after that initial announcement we have not heard anything so and of course reliance is there but reliance says that they will manufacture only for self consumption so their glass if they make it is not likely to come into the market but the other people's glass will come into the market so we will have a a, a nice field of manufacturers who will be able to supply glass to domestic customers thank you mr gandhi may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions the next question is from the line of mohit kumar from dm capital please go ahead hello uh, thanks for the opportunity once again uh, so my uh, so do we need to raise external money to expand the capacity to till 2000 tpd yeah mohit uh, as i had mentioned the board will actually consider the sg4 expansion at an appropriate time and uh, uh, we will surely be looking at uh, financing by way of debt and equity both and that point in time we may probably uh, decide to raise some equity but uh, as of now that is not there from the point of view of uh, uh, funding the acquisition also Uh, there is a discussion about raising the equity to to pay to pay the money uh, in a couple of months or maybe sometime later but uh, these are still to be finalized we will surely be needing some cap- some capital to complete our expansion uh, in europe as well as here second so you haven't withdrawn i think uh, debt uh, amount is 1.4 billion at the end of fy22 uh once the sg uh, the the expansion is complete uh what is the date figure the peak date i'm talking about the 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 current round of expansion in the current expansion which is sg3 in india we had tied up for 200 crore of term date so we have drawn close to 100 crores by now and 100 crores will be drawn uh, by the time the project is completed so that's the status on the date and equity we had raised 200 crores by qip the rest everything is being financed from internal accruals so the debt uh, after this pension will be around 2 billion is that understanding correct right so 200 is crore is this and also there is a, a date which was taken for another first expansion which was sg2 which is about 55 to 60 crores okay 55 crores also and so thank you sir all the best thank you thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Kevin Lashar from DSP Investment Managers please go ahead yeah um, thanks for taking me back in the queue so just one small question so what is the price differential between uh, us and chinese solar glass manufacturers currently so the fob prices are different but uh, in terms of their local pricing we have to look at the landed cost so okay. to most uh, large buyers in india we sell at uh, uh, the, the comparative landed cost plus minus something or rather plus something and to other customers who are smaller ones uh, we have uh, slightly higher pricing for them uh, which is about 5 to 10% depending on case to case basis 
Okay, so is it five to ten percent of price differential between Chinese players? I didn't get the exact number. For the for the smaller customers, yes, but for the larger customers, it will be two to three percent, two to five percent maybe. Okay, got it. Um, thanks a lot, and all the best for the coming years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kashyap Zavedi from MK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, sorry, my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as a last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you very much for the interest shown in the uh, performance of our company. And uh, we appreciate all the good wishes which have been given. And um, it is with the support of the investor community that we can consider to grow and flourish. So we, we appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.